So once you learned how to decompose functions and do the chain rule the long way, we're going to go on to the second half of Unit 2, Lesson 6, and that's using the chain rule kind of directly without all of the work, or at least without writing all of the work. So if we can use the right words that I've tried to set you up with, then you don't have to write all of kind of the long form work, mm, hopefully. So hopefully by now you can see compositions of functions, meaning when you see this function inside of the other, it's very obvious that, hey, you know, that's an x squared inside of sine of x or whatever it is. And so hopefully by the end of this, you're on board with being able to use the chain rule to find derivatives of compositions of functions without doing all of the algebra, by letting the words do the work. So just to remember, if we were going to try to find the derivative of cosine of 4x squared, I'm going to say, well, overall, the structure of this is we're doing cosine of something, which is what I'm going to say when I write cosine of u. And that'll be important here in a minute if you want to do it my way. So cosine of something, and that something is 4x squared. So the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that same something. Notice, because it's dy du, Cosine has a u inside, sine has a u inside, okay? And the derivative of our something, the derivative of our 4x squared is 8x. So to find that derivative, we're multiplying dy over du times du over dx. Boom. And on the other side, this negative sine of u is dy du, and this 8x is du dx. So what I guess I hope you can see, the thing you need to understand so we can skip some work, is this negative sine of u is the derivative of the outer function, right? That's really the derivative of the cosine part. And no matter what, cosine has a derivative of negative sine. We'll deal with different inputs, but that's always going to be true. So again, it's, it's the derivative of the outer part. And then what is 8x? Well, you can see that's the derivative of this inner, that thing that's inside of cosine, this 4x squared. And so when we're done, we don't want to have that u in there. And what I'm going to try to get you to see is, well, the derivative of cosine up top is going to be negative sine of the exact same input, shoot, um, times the derivative of that input. The derivative of that 4x squared is 8x. Okay. And then again, what are we going to look at here? Well, 2x minus 7 to the third power, I'm going to call that, well, this, is, this function is something cubed, and that something is 2x minus 7. So what's the derivative of something cubed? Three times the same something squared, right? I'm not changing. If it's u here, it's u there. And the derivative of 2x minus 7 is 2. So we'll multiply everything back together, dy du, du dx. What is this 3u squared? Well, 3u squared is the derivative of this outer function. I'm, I'm not even going to say 3u squared. It's 3 times the input squared, right? The exact same input. And so we put 2x minus 7 back in there. And what is this 2? That's the derivative of this input, 2x minus 7. So if that doesn't make sense, go back, do some more problems. If you want to watch my video, go back and rewatch the first part of this chain rule stuff. Okay, so I'm going to have some words on the next page, and so let me tell you what they are, and then we'll have them typed up. So we need to think about breaking this apart, sine of x squared, as the outer function being sine of something, and the inner part, that something, is x squared. So it's going to be, well, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same something, except I'm not going to write it up here. I'll be writing my answer and just skipping over all of this momentarily, okay? So the derivative of sine of something is cosine of the same something. That something, meaning the u, that something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x, okay? So again, when I'm thinking sine of u, I'm just saying, well, the derivative of the thing, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same something. That something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x. 
And so what's that gonna look like here? I can't remember if I typed these or not. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna say as I'm doing this out loud is the derivative, and as I say derivative, I'm gonna be writing my derivative notation, really ugly. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same something. And our something is x squared. So I put x squared back in there, right? Our something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x. And so if we understand what we're doing here, I'm actually doing the work we did back here. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of the same something. And I'm say the same something because up here, I have a sine of x squared. The derivative of that part is going to be cosine of the exact same x squared. And that something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x. I'm always going to be multiplying by the derivative of that input. Okay. So when we look at this, 2x minus 7 cubed, I'm thinking of this as something cubed. So I'm saying, well, the derivative of something cubed, moving on, the derivative of something cubed is three times that same something squared. And I'm leaving that blank for a second. Right? Because I'm trying to ignore the input. Because it doesn't matter what the input is. If you have something cubed, it's going to have a derivative of three times thing squared or whatever it is. right? And that something, the something that was cubed that's now squared, that something is 2x minus 7, which has a rate of change of 2. Right? So we can just do the chain rule straight through. All right, so let's just jump here. Um, so tangent of x all cubed, that's pretty obvious that this is the derivative of something cubed. And the derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. Ooh, I added a word, but that's cool. And our something is tangent of x. So I'm writing tangent of x as the input to the 3 stuff squared, right? And that something is tangent of x, which has a rate of change of secant squared x. All right, one more time. So let's look at the structure here. We're always taking the derivative of the outermost thing first. The derivative of 3 sine of something is 3 cosine of the same something. And that something is 2x cubed, which has a rate of change of 6x squared. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's try to do some examples here. I think I have these all printed up. No, I don't. Not quite yet. Um, so the derivative of sine cubed x, hopefully you recognize that this is the, good gracious with the yellow, right? This is the same thing as sine of x, all raised to the third power. So this, we're trying to take the derivative of something cubed, and the derivative of something cubed is three times that same something squared, r something is sine of x, which has a rate of change of cosine of x. Oh, I did have that there. Gosh darn it. Okay, the next one will be prettier. So what are we looking at here? Which is the outermost, sine or the fourth power? And the answer is the fourth power. So the derivative of something to the fourth power is four times that same something cubed. That something is sine of x, which has a rate of change of cosine of x. So what are we thinking here? The derivative is tangent the outer function or the cube the outer function? The cube is. The derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. Our something is tangent of x, which has a rate of change of secant squared x. Maybe something to watch out for. People, uh, maybe students in my class, are often wondering, hey, do I do this derivative again? Do I do the derivative of secant squared? So always be thinking of inputs and outputs. So right now, what is the three blank squared? Well, that's the derivative of the cubing function. 
right? And the derivative of something cubed is just three times that same something squared. That something that was cubed and now squared is tangent. And the derivative of tangent goes here. And so if I'm going to write a secant squared here, this is supposed to represent the derivative of tangent. And maybe I'll write that in. I'll write tangent x instead of the word tangent. Right? And so if you're thinking about inputs and outputs, there should be no question about, hey, do I do the chain rule once more? And I have a couple of examples in a bit here where there are um, two functions or three functions, one inside another inside another. And there you'll see, hey, I actually do need to do the chain rule more than once. All right, so what about here? Uh, secant squared, we're taking the derivative of something squared, and the derivative of something squared is two times that same something, I guess if you want, to the first power, but we're not going to write that. And that something is secant, which has a rate of change of secant tangent. All right, so we're always writing the same input, and then multiplying by the derivative of that input with this chain rule stuff. So hopefully when you see cosine to the 17th power, you're thinking, well, that's actually not that much harder, even though 17 is a bigger exponent. And the derivative of something to the 17th power, 17 times that same something to the 16th power, our something is cosine of x, which has a rate of change of negative sine of x. Don't forget to give that negative sine x a hug so it doesn't look like you're subtracting, or so you're not subtracting. All right, so without functions to look at, um, I don't know if that makes this harder or easier, but it's definitely different. So we're given a bunch of different numbers. G of five is negative three, G prime of five is six, H of five is three, H prime of five is negative two. I wouldn't worry about those. What you should worry about is finding f prime of 5. And what I see on the right-hand side, because I'm definitely going to write f prime of x on the left-hand side of the equal sign, the right-hand side is h of x is the input to g of x. And so what are we going to write? Well, we're going to say the derivative of g of something is g prime of that same something. Right? And that something is h of x which has a rate of change of h prime of x, right? So it's the same thing we were doing before, just maybe less concrete because we don't know exactly what g and h are as functions, right? And if we're going to do f prime of 5, we'll just replace all the x's with 5's, all right? So f prime of 5 is g prime of h of 5 times h prime of 5. And now we can look back Oh, I, get, I guess I need to do some other stuff here. All right, so h prime of 5 is negative 2. h of 5 is 3. And it looks like we're actually not going to be able to finish. Or at least that's as far as we can get. Since h of 5 is 3, we can't evaluate g prime of 3 because we weren't given g prime of 3. We were only given g prime of 5. and well, just to see the way that works. Okay, so check this out. This is a triple, or at least this is three functions. There's a sine function, there's a cube function, and there's a 5x minus 2 function. So which is the outermost function? Well, the easy way to tell, or at least one way to tell, is, you know, if we were going to put in some number like x equals 3, if we're going to put in some number like x equals 3, the first thing we would do would be to do 5 times 3 minus 2. So that's the innermost function. The next thing we would do is sine of what, whatever gets spit out. And the last thing we would do is the cubing. So maybe another way to look at this if you need it is, I guess I'm seeing this as the cubing of a sine and inside that sign is 5x minus 2. Okay, so the derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. And that's always the case. What's the next thing inside? What was being cubed and is now being squared? Sign. Okay, 
So we're going to say the derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. Our something is sine, which has a rate of change of cosine. And what do I say there? I think I say of something else. It takes me a minute when I'm talking in between. So the derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. That something is sine of x. Oh, is sine, which has a rate of change of cosine. Of 5x minus 2, which has a rate of change of 5. All right, so that 5x minus 2 goes into the sine and the cosine. Because if we were doing this the decomposition way, I would have written this as y is equal to u cubed, u is equal to sine of v, and v is equal to 5x minus 2. So doing everything out, dy du is 3u squared, which we had right here. That was the first thing we had, kind of 3u squared. All right? And du dv is cosine of v. All right? So I'm going to write sine. Sine has the derivative of cosine. And notice these both have v if I'm doing the decomposition work. So whatever I put into cosine is the same input I put into sine. And actually it's v. It's 5x minus 2. I already know 5x minus 2 goes in there. We need the rate of change of 5x minus 2. So dv dx is 5, which is why we get this 5 at the end. So Another way to say that is on the left-hand side of the equal sign, we'd be multiplying dy du times du dx, nope, times du dv, times dv dx. And of course, the dv's and du's multiply out. And on the right-hand side, well, you get what you saw. 3 times u squared, u is sine of v which has a rate of change of cosine of v. I'm just not saying v. And then that thing is a 5x minus 2, which has a rate of change of 5. So if you're thinking about inputs and outputs, you'll know when to stop doing the chain rule, meaning here, why did I write 5 at the end? Because that was the derivative of 5x minus 2. There's no more things to take the derivative of. If you're not always thinking about inputs and outputs and you're just kind of taking a bunch of derivatives, you're not going to know when to stop doing the chain rule. Okay, so here's another triple, similar structure to try to help. So we need to consider the secant, the cubing, and the 2x minus 5, which is the outermost function. What are we going to take the derivative of first? The cube. The derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. That something is secant which has a rate of change of secant tangent, which has an input of 2x minus 5, which has a rate of change of 2. All right, so if it's y equals secant cubed of 2x minus 5, again, what am I insane doing the exact same thing? That's the same, right? Yeah, weird. Okay. So why is this a little more difficult than the last one? Because in addition to 1 over x is the input to tangent, so we need the chain rule there, we have to deal with the fact that x squared, one function, is being multiplied by another function, tangent of 1 over x. And so I'm going to start off with my product rule stuff. The derivative of a product of two functions is the first function, x squared times the derivative of the second function. And I'm thinking, tangent of 1 over x, that's going to take me some thinking. So I'm just going to continue my product rule stuff, then I'll come back and fill in the blank. Um, plus my second function, tangent of 1 over x, times the derivative of the first function, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. Maybe I put parentheses around tangent of 1 over x. And so now I can just focus on the derivative of this tangent of 1 over x. All right, so maybe I'll just cross this off for a second so we can focus. And the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that same something. That something is 1 over x, which has a rate of change of negative 1 over x squared. All right, so let's roll through a bunch of these and try to go quickly. 
So the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that same something. Our something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x. Oh, for some reason, my brain said we did the same thing. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same something. Our something is x squared, which has a rate of change of 2x. If you can say these along with me, that's really going to help you remember and be able to do these things. So the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that same something. Our something is x cubed, which has a rate of change of 3x squared. The derivative of cosecant of something is negative cosecant cotangent of the same something. So make sure you're leaving a blank to put x cubed inside of here. Right? So our something is x cubed, which goes inside the cosecant and cotangent, which has a rate of change of 3x squared. Okay, so hopefully you're noticing this is sine inside of a cube, and inside of that sine is 2x. So the derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared. Our something is sine of something else, which has a rate of change of cosine of that something else. That something else is 2x, which has a rate of change of 2. And someone didn't change that away from yellow, so that's pretty hard to read. 